everyone. Welcome to Revolution Youth Group. My name is Ed Martin. I'm the youth director here at Journey Christian Church. So excited that you guys are tuning in tonight. Hope you guys are all doing well. We miss you. Like, seriously, we miss you a lot. I thought we'd do something a little bit fun tonight. Last week, we did some rock, paper, scissors. I hope you guys enjoyed that had some fun with that. This week, I'm going to invite Alicia Mackey up here. She's one of our seniors and one of our student leaders, and she's going to lead us into a... I'm, actually, I'm going to let her tell that story. All right. Hello, hello. How's it going, guys? Okay, so we're doing something a little different this week where we're going to combine a couple things together, and that would be... Uh, we're going to start with a dance here, and before we get going on the dance, I just want to say the reason behind why we're doing this dance, and um, we're going to do this dance to a worship song, and the reason being is that worship is not something, like, you don't just sing during worship. Worship means a lot of things to a lot of different people. So it could mean that you dance, or you sing, or you pray, or you journal, or maybe you just sit quietly and you just, you just soak in his presence. So I just want to invite you, um, you know, we're all at home, we're all in our individual spaces, and no one's watching. Um, Try something new. Try a new way to interact with God in worship tonight. And so um, I'm going to teach Ed here a dance and all of you. So uh, it's, it's uh, maybe you know it, it's the Cotton Eye Joe dance. And we're going to do it to a worship song to start. And we'll just continue on worshiping from there. So without further ado, this is how it goes. Okay. They can see our feet. Yes. All righty. So. It starts off, okay? You're just going to do the same moves over and over again, and it works to the beat of the song. So you take your right foot, and you tap the floor with your heel twice. So one, two. You take your right foot, and you tap behind you twice with your toe. And then you tap to the side, and then you tap to your left hand in the front, and then back out to the side, and left hand in the back. Okay, so let's go over that really quick. So twice in the front, twice in the back, to the side in the front, side in the back. And then next, you're going to take your right foot and step right, left, right, and then you're going to clap, and then you're going to spin once, and you should be back to where you started. So then you do the same thing on your left side. Do you want to go through left side? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so left foot. Twice in the front, twice in the back, and then side, front, side, back. Step left, step right, step left, clap, and then spin once. Okay? And then you just keep repeating right and left. You think you got that? Oh, we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> okay. No cyberbullying allowed. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> So, we're going to start off worship with a song, which you can dance to. I invite you to. Um, if dancing's not your thing, try it anyway. Um, and throughout worship, try something new tonight. Maybe journal, maybe, maybe sing, maybe pray, whatever you want to do. So, without further ado.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that in the fire, just like with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you were with them. And just like you were with them, you were with us. Thank you, Lord, that you promise to never leave us or forsake us. Thank you, Lord, that in you we are alive. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus, you said you have come that we may have life and have it abundantly. And so, Lord, we want to step into that tonight. God, no matter what our week's been like, whether our week's been high, whether our week's been low, 
You know, the weather, it rained, it, sn it snowed, and the sun was out. The weather's changing. <laughs> Welcome to Minnesota. But God, you remain the same. So thank you, Lord, that we can rest in that. We can take hold of that. We can have confidence in that. So Lord, we thank you. What you're going to do tonight, we thank you in advance. And we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, worship team. Fantastic job. You guys rocked it. Shout out again to Alicia and Mackey for teaching us, teaching me how to dance. It's okay. I there's a reason why I'm not a dancer. I like to I like to dance sometimes, but <laughs> so if if you notice I was going in the wrong direction a couple times, you're like, Ed, that's not how you're supposed to do it. It's okay. It's my first time. So Thank you, Alicia, for, for teaching us to dance. So I hope you guys were able to participate in that. You know, David danced before the Lord, so he says, I will become even more undignified than this. So anyway, there you go. So once again, welcome and thank you guys for tuning in to Revolution Youth Group. My name is Ed Martin. I'm the youth director here at Journey Christian Church. If you're tuning in for the first time or the hundred times, I would just like to say, Hi. Welcome. So glad you guys are tuning in, and I'm excited to hear what God is doing in you and through you. Once again, as always, we miss you. I miss you guys. I think I can speak for the leaders as well. They miss you guys. We miss you like crazy. We obviously, we wish in different circumstances that we could all meet in this building, in the sanctuary together, like our normal Wednesday nights, but this is what we got to do, so we're going to make the most of it. So with that, um, so whether you're tuning in on Facebook, whether you're tuning, tuning in on the church website or on YouTube, we just want to let you guys know that we love you and we're praying for you and we will be together soon, hopefully sooner than later. It's, it's going to be here before you know it. We'll be back in the sanctuary and this will be a memory. But nonetheless, we're going to make the most of what we can do right now. So with that being said, we are going to continue our series did Jesus say that? Jesus did and does amazing things, doesn't he? I mean, gosh, countless miracles, healings and deliverances, and most importantly, dying for our sins and rising again. He is God in flesh. What can he not do? And Jesus said some powerful words as well, but he also said some hard words. Last week, we talked about how Jesus said, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And this week we'll be focusing on the words, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Let that sink in for a little bit. So but before we address that, why don't you open up your Bibles to John chapter 6, verses 53 through 59. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Holy Spirit, thank you once again for the opportunity to be together. Pray you just guide my words. May they be your words. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus says to eat my flesh, drink my blood. Words like these no doubt may make us scratch our head and be like, what? what is, did Jesus say that? What is he trying to get at? What are, you, what are you trying to say here, Jesus? I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, my mind goes to the Twilight books, movie series. If you are unfamiliar with Twilight, the Twilight series, it is about vampire romance. Edward Cullen, the vampire, loves the human Bella Thorne, and they fall in love, and it's a vampire romance of, with werewolves and stuff. It was really big. I mean, for some of you, you're, maybe you're listening, you're like, maybe you've read it. It was very big when I was in high school. 
I mean, just like Harry Potter was big back then, it was, it was all the rage, at least for some people. And you were either Team Edward or you were Team Jacob. I was neither because I thought it was dumb. I, I thank you. Preach, preach it. I, had, I did not care for that series. Never read it. I, I know my younger sister's read it. She's like, oh, it's great. I don't know. I didn't participate because I thought it disgraced the name of Edward. Got to take pride in my name. Anyway, I just thought it was dumb. So, but if you know anything about vampires, they want to suck your blood. Oh, they yell, I want some blood. But as Shaggy from Scooby-Doo once pointed out, you wouldn't want mine, it's yellow. So anyway, point number one, context. Like we talked last week, context is so important here. If we read this with our 21st century minds, we can mistakenly think Jesus is suggesting cannibalism in bestiality. Drink someone's blood, isn't that what vampires do, Jesus? Uh, is that what Jesus is saying? Many times as Christians, we use certain passages in the Bible with a lot of liberty. And sometimes we take them out of context. And some people who don't believe in God will read the Bible to discredit God. They read that and they say, aha, gotcha. Look at that. See, Jesus is saying drink blood. What do you say to that? Okay, okay, well, just calm down, calm down. But that's why it's so important that when we read the Bible, that we take it in context, not out of context. To understand the context of this passage, we have to go back to earlier in the chapter. The chapter begins with one of Jesus' most famous miracles, which is called the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus had been teaching with his disciples to a huge crowd. It said 5,000 men, but they did not take an account of women and children. So you're probably looking at possibly a number as high as 12,000 people. It's a lot of people. That is... Uh, it's a lot. Think of the state fair. A lot of people. They have nothing, and this crowd that's with Jesus has nothing to eat. And the disciples say to Jesus, hey, send them away. We don't have anything to give them. And Jesus jokes with them and says, hey, why don't you guys give them something to eat? And the disciples are like, how? <laughs> there's there's 5,000 plus people here. We, we, we got nothing to give them. And then all of a sudden, the disciple points out, hey, there's a, guy, there's a boy here. He's got two fish and five loaves of bread. And the disciples are like, yeah, this, this, this will work. And Jesus says, hey, bring them to me. And we know the story if you've read it. Jesus prays for the meal. He prays to the Father, blesses the meal. And all of a sudden, they have enough. Yeah, everyone, everyone's got enough bread. Everyone's got enough fish. And it says by the end of the whole thing, there's 12 baskets left over. I mean, we don't really appreciate how awesome that is. Like from five loaves of bread and two fish, you fed 12, over 5,000 people. Holy cow, Jesus, you're amazing. And so after this miracle, I mean, the, there's plenty left over, and the crowd is so happy, and like they're thinking, we got to put Jesus on the throne. And Jesus, knowing that they want to make him king, and he knows it's not his time, he, he basically sneaks off away into the mountains, so that way the crowd doesn't, you know, take him and seize him to go be the king because he knows it's not his time. So the disciples, they wait until about the end of the day, and they're like, you know what, let's go to the other side of the sea to Capernaum. And so while they go across the sea at night, Jesus appears to them, walking on the water. Pfft, no big deal. He was walking on the water. Fast forward a bit, disciples get across the water, and the crowd that Jesus had, and the disciples had just ministered to followed them. And so Jesus, so. They came and found Jesus across the other side of the sea. Which leads us, brings us back, if we, we're going to pick up here from John chapter 6, verse 25. We pick up here, and it's Jesus tells the crowd when they find him, says, You seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. So my second point tonight is called motives. Oftentimes when we hear the, uh, the word motive, we think of law and order, right? Uh, dun, 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 bum, 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 bum. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> so usually a motive, you think of what, the, with murder, like you know, the killer has a motive. But not, we're not talking about murder here. A motive means a reason for doing something. 
we all have a motive, not necessarily an agenda, but we all have something in all of us that God has given us that drives us. There's a reason why you are fearfully and wonderfully made. There's a reason why I'm not the same person as Alicia Mackey, as, a, as I'm not the same person as Michael Lane. God has created us, created us very differently, and there are certain things that we are passionate about. Some of the things we, we, are, we are all passionate about Jesus, but there are certain things like she enjoys soccer. Okay, I'm more uh, football, and I don't know if she likes football. Do you like football? Kind of? Okay. American football. Yeah, that's right. So there are, th- there are things, items, sports, music styles, etc., that you are passionate about. Some people love the screamo music. I love the hokey pokey. You ready to do the hokey pokey? Yeah. And like, I just, that's just not my style of music. I, I, just, I just don't really like that. But I know some people love it. But so as you continue to grow and get older, you will find more and more what that is. What are some things that motivate you? What are some things that you're passionate about? What are things that drive you? So for example, if you're in a sport, your motive for doing it is a couple of reasons. One, you enjoy it. You know, I love to run. I know for some people, running is like, oh my gosh, you love to run. That's so boring. But I love it. For some people, they'll play soccer, and they love it. I, didn't, I never got into soccer, but I'm glad you guys enjoy it. Hockey. Okay, I know Minnesota is the state of hockey. I, I don't really care about hockey. I'm fired <laughs> in the state of hockey. I know. So anyway, we all, but so, so for some people, they love hockey. To eat, breathe hockey, I just never did. But that's okay. So we all have different motivations. We all have certain things that drive us. Why, why do you, if you're in high school, you're working a job, what, what is your motivation for working a job? Maybe your mom and dad said, hey, you're not going to sit in your butt on the summer, so they make you go get a job. All right. Or maybe your motivation is like, well, I need money to put gas in the car, so... Probably should get a job. Or you're like, I just need some spending money. Got to get that dough. Got to make a living. Anyway, you, I, think you, I, think you're try, I think you get my point here. So as far as our relationship with Jesus, though, you will find growing up that sometime your motive of coming to church, youth group, Sunday school even, is not motivated by you, but by your parents. If you had your choice, it may not be showing up to youth group or church. You're here because you have to be. But hopefully along the way, as you pursue Jesus, you find yourself showing up because you want to. All of us at some point have to make a decision to follow Jesus. Not because mom and dad made you, but because you have decided to follow Jesus. So, we, so with that being said, we have to, so understanding the motivation of this crowd that Jesus is talking to helps us understand this passage of what Jesus is getting at when he says, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Their motivation really wasn't to see Jesus. It was because they wanted to see more miracles and signs. So imagine being at a concert or an event, and you don't want it to end. Maybe if you're at the Wood City Music Festival or City on the Hill, you're, there's a band, certain band that you love, and you just, you just maybe it's Skillet, maybe it's... Uh, that one band, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's whatever band that you guys like, and then, you, and then you hear, so the band's done, and you hear they're, they're, the band, let's say it's Skillet, they're in another town, and you and your buddy's like, let's go to that concert, let's go and see them again, because we just, we love Skillet. So the same way, the crowd gets there, and you know, they know Jesus, so Jesus did, just did the, fed the 5,000 plus, they're like, Jesus is over here. Let's go, and, let's go and see another show. They're expecting a show. Jesus, what sign are you going to work for us so that we may believe? What can you do for me, Jesus? They came as if they were going to a spectacle, a show, a concert. He just duplicated five loaves of bread and two fish. What is he going to do next? Now, we don't marvel enough on the things that Jesus does, right? Miracles have a very short shelf life in our lives God shows up, and we're like, oh my gosh, God just did something amazing, and then a couple of weeks later, we forget. You're like, what did God do? And you find yourself like, God, where are you? It's like, well, didn't he just show up? So we don't, we don't appreciate how much, we don't appreciate the miracles of Jesus as much as we should. But nonetheless, 
they came for the blessing. The crowd came. They, weren't, they were hanging out with Jesus, not just, just because they wanted to see his show, but they came for the blessing, but they missed the point that he is the blessing. He is the show. He is the main event. Jesus is saying, you didn't come to me. You didn't come for me. You came for the bread. You came for a show. Which leads us to my third point, which is eat my flesh, drink my blood. Is Jesus suggesting and asking us to be vampires? Is he saying that twilight is biblical? No. Jesus is speaking in a parable here. He's, he's being metaphorical here. What does Jesus' fl- uh, bl- flesh and blood remind us of, though? Sounds an, awful like, uh, sounds an awful lot like communion or the Lord's Supper. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. Paul writes here, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Taking communion is a very common tradition that we have at churches, in all kinds of churches. Every, whether it be once a month, maybe it's every week that they have communion. We, we eat either some bread or some crackers and some juice. And, and we don't take communion for the sake of eating some cool crackers and some nice grape juice, even though it tastes good. I remember as a kid, always like looking forward to certain services because my dad would have a certain kind of bread. And oh my gosh, it was so good. But we don't, we don't, we don't take communion for the sake of the bread and the juice. It's by, for what it symbolizes, what the Lord has done for us. Jesus' body was broken for you and I. His blood was spilt for you and I. So Jesus says, eat my flesh, drink my blood. I think what Jesus is getting after to the crowd is, believe in me. Believe in me. Don't just come for the show. Believe in me. In an article from Desiring God, an author writes, For Jesus, eating is believing. Drinking is believing. He promises eternal life to those who believe in him. Don't come for the food that perishes. Don't come for a concert. Jesus is saying, don't come for the show. Come for me. Believe in me. Eat my flesh. Drink my blood. It's very similar to when Jesus says, abide in my love. Abide in the vine. In Galatians 2.20, it says this, I've been crucified with Christ. It is I that no longer lives, but Christ who lives within me. Eating his flesh, drinking his blood, means we are partaking, fellowshipping, and following him. So many times, Jesus would say to the disciples and say, follow me. Follow me is what Jesus is saying. Follow me. As I was preparing for tonight, as I was, as I was gathering my thoughts, uh, oftentimes when I prepare a message or whenever I'm reading the Bible, sometimes I'll think of movies because I'm just a movie buff and I just, that's something I enjoy and I think that's something, how God speaks to me in a, in a somewhat way. And the movie that came to mind was The Polar Express. If you know what The Polar Express is, it's also a book, but I'm referencing the movie for movie purposes. And to kind of give you the rundown, the, it's a story about this kid. We don't, really, we don't know his name, but he gets on the train called the Polar Express, and it goes to the North Pole. And the way the movie describes the story is this kid is very skeptical. He's like, are we really going to the North Pole and his friends along the way are saying, hey, it's a magic train. We're going to see Santa. And the theme throughout the story is believe, believe, believe. And slowly but surely he's like, he still doesn't know what to make to think of it. So they get to the North Pole and they're in the, in the it's kind of like a, 
Times Square in New York, except at the North Pole style. So Santa's coming out. All the elves are screaming. All the children that are there are screaming, Santa is coming to town. Santa's here. Oh, my gosh. And the, the Santa with the sleigh and the reindeer, they're, they're jumping up and down. They're excited. And they, they view in, at least the camera shows, it views in on, on the reindeer's bells, on Santa's sleigh. And the kids are like saying to this, the, the main character, like, aren't those bells the most beautiful sound you ever heard? And he says, like, I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. And all of a sudden, from a distance, we see a bell pop off the, rain, uh, the, the sleigh. And comes at his feet. And all of a sudden, he has to make a choice. All of a sudden, he realizes He's asking himself that question. Do I believe? And so he takes, he takes that bell and he says, okay, I believe. I believe. I believe. And all of a sudden, Santa's behind him and he says, what was that you just said? And he looks at him and he's like, I I believe. I shared last week that there's a difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus. Believing and knowing about something is totally different. Believing in something changes everything. Maybe you've been walking with Jesus for a long time, praise God but maybe you feel you're at a crossroads. You're asking yourself, what is my motivation? What am I doing here? Why do I go to church? Why do I, why, you know, why do, I do this? And I'm not, I'm, not saying, I'm not sharing this to say to overthink your salvation or to say, am I really saved? That's not what I'm getting at. Let me ask yourself, though, what is my motivation? What drives me? What drives me in my relationship with Jesus? Am I here because we got cool worship Am I here because we got a cool message? Am I here because we got cool sound? Am I here because we got some cool games? Or am I here for Jesus? And, it, and I'm not saying we can't enjoy those things. We, we should enjoy worship. We have an awesome worship team. We, we should enjoy the message. We should, I mean, I hope you guys do. <laughs> we should enjoy, the, we, we have an amazing sound team. We have, we have amazing people here. I'm not saying that's bad, but be honest with yourself and ask yourself, am I just here for the show? Or am I here for Jesus? And if you find yourself just here for the show, don't get discouraged. My encouragement is to ask God, God, change my heart, change my mind, change my perspective. And he can if you let him. We don't worship the blessing. We worship the one who gives the blessing. Jesus' sayings can be hard to hear and understand. Worship team, you guys can come on up. This saying that Jesus was getting at, some people got offended. Jesus had more than just the 12 disciples. He had many disciples. And some of these disciples, when they heard Jesus saying, eat my flesh, drink my blood, they're like, what in the heck are you saying? Are you out of your mind? And they're saying, this, this is too hard to hear. I, we don't, I don't know if I agree with this. And they walked away from Jesus. Jesus said to the 12 then, as he sees the other disciples walk away, he looks at them and says, do you also want to go away? But Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. We have come to believe. May our response be like Peter. Peter that we've come to believe and know that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. Again, there's such a difference. That crowd, all they wanted was the show. But Jesus is saying, no, believe in me. Don't just come for a show, believe. So don't just know about Jesus. Don't just know about him. It's good to know, I mean, it's good to know facts. It's good to know history. But it's so important to know him. 
most importantly, believe. So God, we thank you. God, that forgive us, Lord, if we show up for a show, for entertainment. Jesus, you're enough. You're enough, God. God, we just, we're so thankful of how good you are to us. Thank you, Lord. Uh, even though when things are hard to understand, some of the things you say, may we still follow you. Even when things are hard, when things that we don't understand, God, may we trust you and say, God, I don't understand this, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe in you. May that be what drives us. It's like, I believe. I believe in you, Lord. I believe in what you say. I believe in what you're about. And I want to know you more. So God, I pray for every person listening in. You would just bless them. In Jesus' name.
Thank you, God, that when you walk into the room, everything changes. Everything changes. That whether, when there's hopelessness, God, that you bring hope. Where there's fear, you bring courage. When there's insecurity, you bring patience. Holy Spirit, I just pray right now, Lord, as we close, God, that you would bless every single person who's been tuning in tonight. That Jesus, even right now, that you would touch them. And Holy Spirit, that you would build them up and encourage them. God, we thank you so much for how good you are to us. Thank you, Lord, that believing changes everything. May that be our attitude, God. That this wouldn't be old no this would not be old news, God. It's good news. Now may we respond like Peter did. We believe. So Jesus, we love you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So don't, don't click off just quite yet. We got, we're going to end off with some announcements here. So I'm going to invite Alex Super here to the front here, and she's going to share a couple announcements with So don't, t- don't click off yet, quite just yet. So I'm going to have her come on up, and Alex is going to share a couple announcements with us. Okay, center myself. Hi, guys. I miss you guys, just so you know. So just going to put that out there real quick. I um, have a few announcements. Just so you guys remember, you can keep up to date on the weekly announcements on both the Revolution Youth Facebook and Instagram page. So make sure that you're following both of those pages if you're on social media. Um, so first thing, weekly Bible plans. Um, so you can join us weekly on the youth group Bible plan. This week the plan is called Getting to Know the Real You. And also make sure that you add Ed Martin on the Version app. Um, And then we have Grounded, which is Wednesday night, which I guess would technically be tonight, um, at 8.15. So join them on Zoom for some Kahoot. Super fun. Um, And just you get to kind of, I don't know, uh, see everyone and socialize a little bit, social distance socializing. Um, And then the meeting ID number will be posted on the Facebook and Instagram page. So once again, make sure that you're following both of those pages. Friday at 3 p.m., there will be a youth group Zoom call. So everyone, students, leaders, everyone's invited. Um, It's just a great opportunity to to catch up with everyone, kind of see people. And then Young Men's Life Group. Um, So you can tune in Sundays on Facebook Live to hear Matt share a devotion. And then stay tuned um, because he also shares a song of the week. So, yeah, that's all for the announcements. Uh, Hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much, Alex. So again, once again, guys, um, we're going to sign off here. But again, reminder, Kahoot tonight, 8.15. Hope to see you all there. And then Friday at 3 o'clock. So remember those things. Again, the meeting IDs will be posted on the Facebook and the Instagram page. Again, we love you guys. We missed you. Hope you have a great rest of your night and a great rest of your week. God bless.